So when it comes to PC gaming, I mean, I'm gonna throw some uh, made up statistics at you right now, but when it comes to gaming and cooling your PC, your gaming PC, the most popular uh, type of cooling for CPUs are AIOs. And I based that statistic on uh, nothing. I just made it up now, but in my fictional world, the reason why everybody likes AIOs, and no joking aside, AIOs are quite popular when it comes to cooling PCs, is because they take, you know, all the benefits of like custom water cooling, if you can see, situate custom water cooling. They take all the benefits of custom water cooling and they make it easy. I mean, it's, it's just one thing. You just, you open the box. Opening the box is tough sometimes, there you go. What the deuce? So you open the box, you, you pull out your radiator, your water block, your fan, you install it and you're good to go. But have you ever wondered, like I have, could you take something so simple as an AIO and complicate it? Well, if you've asked that question to yourself, well stick around because here on Major Hardware, I like to answer the questions that, well, nobody's asking. So, now that I have your attention, let me kind of walk you through what we're going to be doing here. So this is the PF120 from Silverstone. And I made mention that I had this cooler back when I did the review of the PF240, which is still in there working great. But I alluded to the fact that I had this one and we were going to be using it to try to cool that one. Easy, right? Well, to do that, we're going to, we're going to get... We're gonna think a little bit outside the box, or I guess I guess this is a box. But you guys seen this on my community tab and you're trying to guess what it is. Some of you guessed shower head, pretty close. Uh, but essentially this is a cooling tower, if we want to give it a, a, a name. And this is a shower head. So basically inside this cap that goes on to this box are some micro channels or some channels that run through it and kind of disperse water out through this, all these little holes. We're gonna put this on top of this box, and in this box, we're gonna have water. That water is gonna be moved around by this pump. You guys remember this thing? This was the pump I used on the uh, water-cooled air cooler. Still here, still working strong. That goes here. Pumps water from here to there, easy. Well, how are we gonna cool the radiators, you're asking? Well, let me tell you. So this, the 120, will slide into this slot right here. On the other side here, you might notice another slot at a bit of an angle. That's where we're gonna insert the other 240. So basically we're gonna insert the 240 this way. We're not gonna be able to cover the whole thing, but we'll be able to get at least 120 millimeters of it. So another like 120 millimeter fan version. That's gonna go here and we're gonna cool this one. So we're gonna basically make it work opposite to how it normally does. Normally it takes heat away from your CPU. Well, we're gonna do it backwards. Now we're gonna put cold to this plate. We're gonna run it into the radiator, use water from the pump to pass that coolness to our heated radiator via the water in the box, and then hopefully cool our CPU. Sounds like magic, might be magic, might not work, but we're gonna find out. Now I haven't actually tested any of this other than I filled the box with water to see if it holds water, but I don't know if this is gonna work at all. On this side we have, basically this is just a mount for the for the water block, so it's gonna be mounted to that. And then this is just kind of a funnel to hold our magical cooling substance over top of the block. I swear this fits. Bam, got it. So I guess step one would be, let's solve this leaking problem, because I know it does leak, so we need to fix that before we can try to cool anything. So it's actually leaking right around where the, where the pump plugs in, because it doesn't really get a good seal to it, so I'm gonna use my buddy here, hot glue, and we're just gonna cake a whole bunch on there and hope it seals up any cracks or gaps we have. Pretty much straightforward, I think. I don't know, we'll find out. Let's try it. All right, just a little bit of glue like that. Should be good. And then we'll just put it in there. I don't know. When in doubt, max it out, you know. Nobody's been hurt by too much hot glue, right? Maybe. I sure haven't. 
All right, so now the cap goes on like so. And we're just gonna insert this tube into the bigger one. There we go. So now we are going to see if it leaks. So keep your eyes peeled down by the pump because that's where it leaked last time and we'll see if it works. Make sure everything's fully smurged. Oh, she's leaking. She's a leaker. So I wasn't able to defeat the leak. So we're gonna do the next best thing and that is to ignore it. We're just gonna let it leak on the table, catch it on this here towel. So step two, let's see if it actually pumps water the way we want it to. Here we go. Oh! It actually works better than I thought it was going to. Take, just, just take a look at that. Cool. So now that we know that works, we need to figure out if we can actually cool the water. So what we're gonna do is install a radiator uh, cool our block and then what I'm gonna do is I'll put a thermometer in the water in the pool down here And we're just gonna see if we can drop the temperature of the water because if we can't then we know we can't cool anything So let's try that first if that's successful then we'll try to cool our PC let's See what our water temperature is sitting at so like it's leveling off around 62 degrees Fahrenheit. We'll just keep it in Fahrenheit for now. And now let's answer that question. How are we gonna cool this, this block here? Well, let me tell you, we're not gonna use ice this time because well, one, the biggest reason I didn't is because I don't think it'll get cold enough. Two, it's gonna, it'll drip and it'll get all over our block here and I, I imagine it would short out the pump eventually. So, we're gonna use something even better. I bet you know what this is. So this is dry ice. Uh, remember, never use me as a benchmark for safety. But dry ice, in a nutshell, if you're gonna use it, make sure you follow the safety precautions for it. No sealed containers, don't touch the bare hands, don't eat it. You know, just the normal stuff, eye protection. Don't be dumb. But that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna put some dry ice in this box. It's kind of an unknown because I don't know what happens when you get a water pump or like this pump here. I don't know how, what happens to it if you get it very, very cold. Is it just gonna break it immediately? Is it gonna transfer that cool liquid into the radiator? Then we can maybe see if the water is gonna cool down. I don't know, there's a lot of unknowns here, but we're gonna find out. So we're gonna start with a little piece of dry ice. Move this back down. Oh God, it's frozen. Ah, here we go. I don't know if you can see that. We're still at 62 degrees. I can feel the pump running. I wish these cords weren't so non-bendy, but I guess we'll have to do. I'll move that over here. Okay, we can't see we can't done cool down some time. Oh, too big. Making some questionable noises. So now we wait and see what happens. We're at 64 now, so we're going the wrong direction, but give her time. Well, surprisingly, things are looking kind of positive. So I did plug another thermometer in here. So I'm measuring the water temperature, which started at 64, and I'm just measuring the room temperature, which is uh, right around 69. And actually, the water temperature is now 60 degrees, so we've dropped four degrees. It feels cold coming out of the, you know, as it passes through the radiator. And I actually can feel, even though these lines are coated, I mean, they're, I can still, they still feel cold. The ice is, the dry ice is almost gone now. But I think that we have proven that we can at least cool down the water. Now it'll take a while if I wanted to wait till this whole pool was cooled down as cold as it can get, but 
We're just gonna try to see if we can keep up with what the CPU's putting out. So now I gotta move all this over to there and see if I can get everything set up. And we'll run some benchmarks and see if we can keep that CPU cool. And also, yeah, we're still on the 2500K. You guys might've noticed my uh, Ryzen CPU did come. So eventually we're gonna upgrade that system, move everything over to this one. And the 2500K will be finally gone. But I think this is a good test for its send off. So be right back. So everything is moved over here. Uh, nothing in the hopper right yet. We're just running the waterfall or the cooling tower over the radiator that's actually plugged into the CPU. And I'm just running IDA 64, so we're just gonna let it run, kind of equalize, see where it wants to level off, and then we'll add some dry ice and see if it actually drops the temperature. So I've had this running for a little bit now. The radiator is, well, it's actually warm to the touch, so that's, that's something. Temperatures currently look to be around 70, so now we're just going to add a bunch of dry ice to this hopper and see if we can actually see any dip in temperature at all. It's not looking good. Now we know we can lower the temperature of the water, but keeping up with the heat of the CPU, uh, I think that might be a little bit more than this thing can do. At the very minimum, it is kind of like holding stable. I just think it's too hot. I mean, I mean the dry ice radiator is cooler, but the, the CPU radiator is just too hot. Too hot. Come on, dry ice, you can do it. Well, uh, I don't know. It's been going for a while. I mean, maybe we're, I mean, I don't know, mostly. Let's, uh, let's turn this bad boy off. Starting to lose, lose a little water and I can't add more because that kind of just ruins everything, but I don't know. We proved that you could cool water this way. I mean, you can take the, take coolness out of the dry ice and pass it into the water and then into the radiator. But um, you just can't keep up with the CPU. I mean, it's it's pretty much keeping it level, I guess. I mean, where we started in temperature wise, we haven't really fluctuated. I mean, if we let it sit here now, I'm sure it'll slowly climb up. So we were able to, I don't know, find a, a nice middle ground where we were able to keep it cool enough to keep running at the same temperature. So we can basically break even. I don't think we can call it cooling but hey it was fun we at least know i bet if we optimize the setup maybe had a, a larger i don't know what, what do you guys think is there any way to make this work let me know in the comments down below let me know if you want me to change anything out try a different way or if you just have a new idea altogether because we'll check it out but for now as i say we broke even it was fun